In this video, I'm going to show you my thought process in choosing the right laptop that suits my needs, both as an architect and as a content creator. The goal of this video is to pass on all of the knowledge that I learned about choosing a laptop so that you can choose the right laptop for you, whether you're a student or an architect or a creative professional. At the end of this video, I'm going to go through some of my recommendations and give you a list of models that I think you should take into consideration. This is going to be another long video, so grab a cup of tea and let's get started. A portion of this video is sponsored by Aura. More on them later in this video. The first question you should ask yourself is, why do you need a laptop and not a workstation? What helped me make my decision is the following statement. A laptop can be a workstation, but a workstation cannot be a laptop. Let that sink in. Working as an architect, I currently outsource most of my renderings or I use cloud-based services. So I don't really need the full force of power that I can get from a workstation. And as a content creator, I need a device that's both portable and powerful. And since laptops became much better at rendering tasks than even just a couple of years ago, thanks to the GPU and software optimization, choosing a laptop over a workstation was a pretty obvious choice for me. At the beginning of your career, you're not gonna know anything. <laughs> You're gonna be so brand new and probably it's gonna be a little bit shocking for you. You're not gonna know how to work with clients or consultants or do construction. And they're gonna have to teach you all of that. <laughs> so when you start at a firm, one of your superpowers is gonna be visualization and software skills, which is why you wanna be able to try out and learn a variety of different industry standard apps and as a young architect, your software knowledge is gonna give you that competitive advantage and it's gonna increase your chances of getting hired at a firm. And when you start at the firm, companies are either gonna give you a laptop, which in most cases means they're gonna outsource the final renderings or use a cloud-based rendering service, or they're gonna give you a desk with a workstation, which means some of the renderings will probably be done internally, or they're gonna give you both a laptop and a workstation. And this is becoming more and more common, especially after the pandemic where offices are getting more and more lax about remote work. Another thing to consider is if you plan on moonlighting or working on side projects while working at your firm, having a powerful personal laptop will come in really handy. These are the three most common form factors for laptops. Mobility isn't always the only reason why you need a laptop. In fact, a lot of people use laptops because they live in small apartments where having a workstation or a dedicated computer could be an issue. If you're a student, chances are you're spending most of your day in studio or at the library or working from home with reliable access to power outlets. So having a small laptop with a really good battery life might not really be a priority for you. What is probably more important is a good screen and good processing power. The market just has so many options right now that if you're willing to put up with a slightly thicker laptop, you can get a huge boost in performance and just a lot more options that you can choose from. And in some cases, you can even save some money. As an architect, I need to be able to work in different locations and have something that's easy to take around. So portability is definitely a factor for me. I have a M1 Air and a M1 Pro, and honestly, I'm so impressed with the overall build and quality, and the battery life has been just incredible. MacBooks have aluminum bodies that always feel solid and look very professional. Thanks to my YouTube gig, I also have an HP X360 transformable laptop that I use for sketching and note taking. This one's probably the most versatile laptop that I have, and I'll go through some of the features later on in this video. Speaking about useful tools, 
I want to talk about today's sponsor, Aura. Identity theft is no joke. It actually happened to me and it was probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Losing control of your personal information, money, and time is something that no one should experience. I've been really strict on my privacy and since then I've avoided sharing personal information, but I simply can't monitor everything myself. Hackers only need you to be distracted one single time. And apparently I'm not alone. Identity theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in America. There's a new victim every 14 seconds. Using Aura is like wearing an invisible armor that gives you multiple layers of protection, including fraud monitoring, VPN, identity theft protection, antivirus, password management app. Aura will scan the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security number. And if there's a match, they're gonna send an alert directly to your phone and email. Basically, it gives you a chance to stop a crime before it happens. If you use the link in the description, you're gonna have access to a two week trial and you can be protected right away. Stopping hackers before they get their eyes on your data is the only way to stay protected and I would really recommend checking it out. And this was something that I actually never consciously thought of before, but since getting the MacBook Air M1, which of course at the time was one of the first laptops with great processing power and no active cooling. I think this makes a pretty big difference when I'm presenting in small rooms or when I'm working in a space with other noisy laptops. And I wouldn't say it's a serious issue, but it's definitely noticeable and it can get kind of annoying over time. If this is something you're concerned about, you should consider a laptop with a passive cooling system, which are typically thinner and more portable but they're not as powerful or they cost a little bit more money. In terms of screen size, you might think bigger is better, but in my case, even though having a big screen with a large resolution is nice, when I'm sitting down for work, I mostly use my laptop with an external monitor, both at work and at my home office. Gaming laptops are more focused on performance, and in most cases, the resolution and quality of the screen don't really go beyond full HD, especially if you're on a budget. For color reproduction, these are some of the standards you can look at. The coverage of the standard is measured in percentage, and the higher the percentage, the better the ability of the display to reproduce these standards. If you're looking for a laptop with a really good display, I would recommend the last generation of MacBooks, and you can just feel more confident about the color reproduction. If you're not gonna rely on the laptop display for the color accuracy, it is relatively easy to find find an affordable color calibrated external monitor these days. As an external monitor, I use the LG Dualup, which is definitely unconventional in terms of resolution, but it packs a lot of features for the price. If you wanna know more about it, I'm gonna leave the link right here. I tried standard laptops and transformable laptops, and I realized that I definitely prefer having a dedicated device for specific functions rather than having a multifunctional laptop. For example, for sketching, I almost always use my iPad Pro because I found the size of a transformable laptop a little bit too big to carry around, especially if you're not working on a desk or a working surface. I also really like the ability to sketch while multitasking or doing other work. And sometimes I just need to be able to draw things really quickly and pull them out on the spot to show people. So having an independent device, it just makes more sense for me. But if you're a student and you're on a budget and you want to hit two birds with one stone, you should probably take the two-in-one device into account. I actually created a video that shows my Procreate workflow with the iPad Pro. And I also did an in-depth review of the HP Spectre X360. I'll leave the link to both right here. I'm always pushing for more ports on laptops. And since I work with a ton of hard drives and monitors and other devices, 
I really, really need to rely on the USB-C hubs for connectivity. And that's why I'm a really big fan of the LG Dual Up, because it takes full advantage of the USB-C connection. With one cable, you can do like three things at the same time, and you can power a laptop up to 90 watts and connect it to a monitor and have access to two USB devices at the same time. I actually don't even need to bring a charger and I can save space in my backpack. I just log into my laptop and voila, you get a fully functional workstation. I just got so used to the fast wake up time and the long battery life of my M1. And also having the fingerprint scanner integrated into the laptop, it just makes it really easy to just log in from session to session. The architecture industry is still heavily based on Windows. And so far, none of the offices that I've worked at have used Apple computers. And I think this is especially true with medium to large firms, but the ARM processor by Apple are really great in terms of performance per watt. The list of native apps is always growing. And for content creation, I honestly feel like they already have a pretty solid list of apps. Revit, which is one of the industry standard BIM software, still works only on Windows platforms. You can use Parallels or other Windows emulation apps to run it on a Mac, but most firms, they tend to stick with Windows because they don't really want to deal with the compatibility issues or having lower performance. I've seen some companies use ArchiCAD and Vectorworks on Macs, especially if you're doing smaller buildings like houses or renos, because smaller size projects, they don't require as much coordination with your team or between different disciplines. So you know I'm not going to do any benchmarks in my videos since you can find plenty online by just doing a quick Google search. Having said that, most of the architecture software still relies heavily on the CPU for a lot of tasks. And in terms of pure performance, Intel is leading the way for now. I'd say 16 gigabytes of RAM is the bare minimum for architecture, design, or content creation work. But with 32 gigabytes, you will be working comfortably without too many compromises. When I got my M1 Air laptop two years ago, I was a little bit disappointed that the max RAM size I could get was only 16 gigabytes. But with the new M2 processor, Apple's finally added a 24 gigabyte option, as well as a dedicated charging port. So yeah, with Max, you can't upgrade the RAM, so you just need to know what size you want when you're buying it. But with a lot of gaming laptops, they let you upgrade the RAM size and they also give you really easy access to an additional SSD slot. On my gaming laptop, yes, I had a gaming laptop. I had two very fast internal SSDs, one for the OS and one as a scratch disk. Architecture and creative software, they need to generate a lot of temporary files or cache files to work properly, which is why your system disk space shrinks over time. So you do need to do some routine cleaning for it to function well. A scratch disk is an internal SSD drive that solves a lot of these issues. Instead of letting the apps save all of their cache in the system drive, I redirect all of them to go into the scratch drive. And this can really speed up your rendering time. It can also avoid bandwidth bottlenecks and it makes the previews more responsive and it saves a ton of space on your main drive. The only drawback is that it will consume more power, so it can affect the battery life of your laptop. Architecture software and visualization software have a really symbiotic relationship with the GPU. Real-time renderers like Enscape, Lumion, and Unreal Engine 5 can now generate global illumination and photorealism via real-time ray tracing. And the architecture industry is also really taking advantage of these new tools. Today, rendering a full quality frame could only take a couple of seconds and you can do it directly in the viewport window. And also Adobe Creative Cloud, Resolve, and some of the other apps can also get a performance boost from modern GPUs. For all of these reasons, a dedicated graphics card is highly recommended in architecture and rendering work. 
To see which one performs better, there are plenty of benchmarks around. I'm gonna leave some of the links in the description if you wanna take a look, but I think for architecture and rendering work, getting a laptop with a dedicated graphics card is the way to go. For architecture work, my company gave me the latest version of the Dell XPS 15 inch with an Intel processor and a GeForce 3050. This machine is really a jack of all trades and it performs really well in rendering tasks as well as video editing tasks. I have the version with the 4K display and it retails for around $2,400. For my personal content creation work, which is mostly writing, some video editing and photo editing, Editing. I use a MacBook Pro M1. And as I mentioned before, MacBooks with the M1 or M2 processors have amazing display, incredible battery life and build. And they really excel when the apps take full advantage of the ARM architecture. However, I do know that these are really expensive. And if you're a student, you're probably looking for the best bang for your buck. So you should also consider gaming laptops like the latest Asus Tough 15 or 17. I use a Tough gaming laptop for a really long time and you can see from the specs, these really are ticking all of the boxes in terms of performance, as long as you can sacrifice the portability and the battery life. And of course it is pretty loud in the active cooling department. These are the ones that I've had personal experience with, but of course there's a lot of options you can choose from. Some brands are even starting to come up with some really cool and unconventional designs, like adding multiple displays or transformable features. And some of them are really pushing the boundaries of what a laptop could be, like the new Asus Zen Fold 17, which can literally fold into a tablet. So try not to get tricked by flashy marketing. Understanding who you are and how you work is the most important factor in making the right purchase. All right, that's it guys. I hope that was helpful and good luck finding your laptop. And let me know in the comments, what's your favorite laptop? If you wanna explore outside of tech and if you're interested in architecture and design and creativity, I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next one.